with the specifications. So it's quite interesting to see that they're using different parts now. So this is the Intel Celeron CPU, the 1037U, running on 1.80 gigahertz. That's actually just a CPU dual core or with two cores. Temperature is going to be 51 Celsius, just as it is. So it's going to be a little bit more harder when we're actually going to be playing games. The specs of this thing only having an open GPL, GL3.0 and that can give us a little bit of, let's say, compatibility issues with some emulators. However, we're going to be looking at it later on. The menu is kind of very cool. I think this is the PlayStation X overall design and this seems to be looking quite nice. So when it comes to overall emulation performance, we can expect, I want to say, great things. But for a cheap box, under $100, this is going to be in quite overall interesting, let's say, thing we can do. So I also have the option for Windows games. Of course, it's going to be very limited with a couple of them. Xbox, PC Engine, and all kinds of stuff. However, if you're going to be looking into the old game boxes, yeah, Super NES, Game Boy, the stuff like that we could play before. With N64, there is going to be interesting. We do even have some GameCube that is compatible, but if it's going to be running great on this, that is of course a different question. And a lot of different devices will struggle because it is going to be in a very old yeah, CPU. But this is kind of interesting. I love the layout of this thing. And we're going to be doing a deep dive into some games to see what we can actually play. I love it that you can actually move the volume control with the right joystick. So let's look into the PlayStation and the overall design of the layout is quite nice with some text and even having a lot of pictures and information. So when it, you're looking just the way how it is, this is kind of cool and I just love it. However, the question remains, for example, with Assault Rigs, can we boot it up? How fast will it boot up? And do we have the audio quality? So we do have some rewind and forward stuff like that. Loading times will be significant faster than normal, let's say in disk itself, but that is not the thing I'm looking for. The thing I'm looking for actually is going to be, can we play the games without any hiccups and do we have audio? I love the bezels, but you can just actually hear there is no audio, or at least I can tell you there is no audio and that's quite unfortunate. That is something they mess up with actually like ripping the ISO files. No, there is no audio. Hmm. And that is a returning problem with many game boxes to save up space and to slap more games on the device. Press select start, we'll go back into the main menu itself. But I want to be clear that not every single game has a problem with the audio. That's why I actually started up this particular game to showcase there is music. We're always complaining on these, let's say, cheap PlayStation 2 knockoff things. I am quite surprised how actually how good it so far performs. The joystick seems to be working fine. I don't notice any weird thing going on. So all the functionalities, if you're going to be playing some PlayStation, this seems to be working just fine here. The PlayStation 2 list is quite remarkable when it comes to, let's say, the way how it looks and everything else. But how is the overall emulation performance? That's why I'm very curious about. Because that would be a very cool extra thing if you can play PlayStation 2 with perfect emulation on a device like this, but... Mm. So let's start off with making a save file on the emulator. And that part seems to be working fine. I did notice some hiccups here and there in the beginning of the audio, so let's get quickly into the gameplay itself. Oh, you can already hear from many parts. Oh, a lot of weird glitching going on. You can see the shaking of the screen. And it's just a little bit of a downside with PlayStation 2. You know, we're pushing it. Where PlayStation 2 is quite difficult to emulate, particularly if we're going to be using very old specification when it comes to hardware. We have seen a lot of mini PCs, same struggle with PlayStation 2. And we're having an old school mainboard with such an old Acceleron CPU. It's going to be the same situation all over again. So let's go back to the main menu. I wanted to give it another attempt, but this time I want to use a two-dimensional game. They are most of the time less demanding for the CPU to emulate. I did see some glitches in the beginning. But this game seems to be working like it should be.
Well, no problem there. Otherwise, I have no idea how to do the super move. It's always funny that they're having only one single game on this with the Xbox Classic system. Yeah, and I can tell you that this particular game, maybe if it even runs great, it's still not going to be an overall great performance with Xbox Classic because it's quite difficult to emulate in general. Okay, when it comes to overall emulation, I can do see and hear that it does struggle, but we do have overall great performance with Jet Set Radio. So that's kind of funny. It is actually playable. So it would be fun to see if we can test some more games in the future on such a cheap device like this. So let's get into some N64 to see how this will overall emulate. I already mentioned before with these mini PCs, even if they are super old, the overall performance can be so much more better than with the other ones that we have seen before. Think about the S905 chipset that has such a problem with most N64 games. So let's get into some N64 gaming. I just want to try a couple of games to see how the overall performance is. So far, so good. I've seen some games running quite good on this. Oh man, where are the buttons? Oh, there we go. No. Cruising USA is one of those games that always struggles on those game boxes that we've tested before. But so far so good and the overall performance is so significant better. So far I have tested with many devices. Okay, so this does actually playable, but I noticed the controller, the back button is really bad. But the gameplay, it's nice. Yeah, there is no stuttering. It's still native resolution, but it's just amazing to see how great it works. And if you're going to be looking into the price point of this particular let's see, system, and the ones that we have seen and basically tested about 20 times before. It's not a bad deal at all when it comes to that. And so far, even testing out some different games too. Emulation performance is just great on this. So, but also another side of it is that you can just see how much performance you're getting for a lot of, let's say, difficult to emulate systems on such an old school, let's say, Celeron processor. So where they're just recycling, and that's a good thing, they're just recycling old hardware that would be like e-waste forever. Now we can actually play thousands of games. Next up, some GameCube. And the reason why, because this is one of the systems some people were asking me about. However, take note is that this is going to be a hit or miss situation. It's quite interesting to see how some of the games will run. And the overall performance is quite good so far. But getting into the gameplay, it's going to be dipping like crazy with the frames per second. You can just hear the audio stutter like crazy. And yeah, GameCube is one of those systems like PlayStation 2. Two dimensional games will have maybe impossibility to run, but getting into, let's say, some three dimensional stuff, fighting games, this is not the way how you want to play. And it is just pushing this device way too much. More louder than all the other games. However, the emulation performance of uh, Thomas Wave is no problem anymore. And that is just amazing. I want to have this like an idea that I have to do a little bit of delay over here. And only particular with this emulator. But beside that, I think that is one of the greatest things when it comes to these older mini PCs, that the performance are so much more significant better than the game boxes itself. But Sega Saturn does struggle on this box and Daytona is completely unplayable with stuttering and very low, low frames per second. So that is unfortunate where we do have some game boxes with general better performance. And yeah, what we can actually do with this is going back to the main menu, try to swap the emulator if you want to. It also implements the widescreen emulator modification. So that's also explains why it looks like kind of weird at the sides, but beside it, the emulation performance is great, native resolution. We can always like mess around with it, doing a little bit of, let's say, tinkering. But when you're going to be looking at it, I think it looks amazing this way. We have a good overall emulation performance with a little bit of hiccup there. But besides that, no problem whatsoever. 
I just wanted to try another game because Dreamcast has such an amazing performance with Dead Alive 2. One of my favorite games, I think one of my maybe in the top five is going to be Power Stone 2. Which position I don't know, but this is such a fun game to play. I grew up with the Smash Brother game and this was for me the next level. It's completely something different. With the Power Stone you need to collect, getting superpowers, this game was absolutely great. And the performance is just amazing. So take note, with Sega Dreamcast we do have a lot of, let's say, cheap game sticks and other game books that we can actually play this with. But this is a great example of a very old PC that are using and we can still use this freaking awesome, let's say, machine for Dreamcast emulation. So moving next to the Sega Naomi, the arcade part, with some old school Giga Wing. Ooh. It is a little bit more difficult to emulate or that's the idea I'm always getting. Also here I do have this idea that we have like an input delay. The analog stick doesn't do anything. Yeah, the delay is maybe something between my ears, but you know, beside that, well, we had some hiccups in the beginning. Yeah. It's also on just native resolution, no craziness, but everything looks kind of nice. So PlayStation Portable is a system that will not run great on this. So I think we need to utilize this for basic gaming. So let's grab ourselves some Bomberman. Just native resolution and just see how it is going to be actually running. So where this game actually starts up, there's already a first major miracle and has some overall okay performance. So when you're going to be looking into the freaking gameplay, you can just hear from the beginning audio that it really struggles already. And this is not even a game that takes up a lot of power. So let's start the stage and let's see how the overall performance will be. Loading times are very fast. Okay, there we go. Getting into the game. It's playable. And that's what we're going to be having with Play Portable. Some games run great, some will run absolutely horrible. But I think the most interesting game that we can actually play on something like this is going to be the, let's say, just basic mini games they call them. And some of them are absolutely great. I think Heroes of Sparta is one of those very cool, let's say, Diablo clones and many of the other ones. Jetpack Joybright, oh yeah. Okay, so this is a great way to check out if you have any delay, because this is a game that is absolutely based on timing. But no. No, so far no problem whatsoever. So when it comes to playing some Play Sportables, you should think about the basic games that can be played on this old school dual core cell ROM. We did have like some screen tearing, but getting pressing select and start will automatically go back to the main menu. I didn't notice any way to actually get into, let's say the special menu to start tweaking.